Since it seems like you guys enjoy the whiteboard approach, we're going to put our construction shirt on and talk about quality control, which is both going to be a theoretical discussion, because obviously here we are at the whiteboard, but also a practical applications discussion, because the idea of building science is very nice. But really, you need to know what it is that you're shooting for, that's targets, so that you can prevent side effects from happening and so you can predict that they're gonna happen in the first place. And then you need to know that you hit those targets. And that is what testing is all about. Now, uh, I'll say two things up front, which is number one, this idea came from a Patreon supporter of ours. Um, we have meetings every two weeks with our Patreon group and uh, it's all behind the scenes stuff. We just kind of do a hangout. All the people who are in there are doing really interesting thought experiments and actual experiments with homes around the country. And also, let me say that we have a download that's free on uh, both our Building Performance Workshop website and also on the Home Diagnosis television series site on uh, how to keep an eye on your home improvement or construction project. So this is actually quite simple. And all we need to do, just like we talk about on the Home Diagnosis TV series, is to give people a language to describe what it is that they're looking to do. Uh, that's more than just granite countertops or what school district I want to live in, things like that. So there are only a couple of components in the house. We're looking at the enclosure and the engines. Now, just as a review, if you haven't heard me give the 4321 spiel, which I'm linking on screen right now, the enclosure is made of two things. It's the air tightness and the insulation layers in your home. The engines are anything that moves air or heat around within the home or between the home and outside. And these things will lose a battle if there's a battle with the enclosure, which is why it's so important to get the enclosure right first. That's just, this is number one priority, number two priority, and then number three priority is all the things under engines. Engines are made up of only a few components as well. We have some kind of a heat exchanger often and or a fan of some kind uh, paired with a distribution system. And then lastly, we have controls. Pretty simple. So all we have to do is address the quality of these components. Now, the elements of home performance that we're always aiming for are four. There is heat bleed, airflow and pressure, moisture and contaminants. This is basically the whole picture. Uh, it's not a very pretty picture, and I'm sorry that it's a little like slopey. I don't have the best penmanship uh, for this, it turns out, but it's fun to pretend to be a professor. So here's what we need to think about. When we're looking at the enclosure, during construction or during an addition project or renovation, um, no matter how extensive it might be, you wanna make sure that the air tightness does not get worse at the very least, if you're talking about something like a renovation. That is how we use blower door testing before and after to make sure that your kitchen is at least as airtight after renovating your kitchen as it was before or air leaky in some cases. Uh, so before and after blower door testing might be something that you specify. Now in the contract or in the plan set, you can specify in detail whatever you want. If you often look at a, a set of plans, the first page or the first two pages or sometimes in places like California, the first five pages will be just notes. So you just sit there and you read, the fine print is about that big, and you can just find notes about all this stuff. The airtightness of the enclosure of this home will be tested before uh, improvement and after improvement, and the airtightness will be found to be the same or better after the fact. Uh, insulation. For example, if you're gonna install a very nice product like uh, rock wool insulation, we have used that on multiple homes and on multiple different projects, and I install it myself. One of the reasons that you use it is because it's kind of more idiot-proof, um, which, hi, I'm Corbett, sometimes I'm an idiot. When you put it in, it'll stay exactly where you put it. It's considered a high-density product. But is it possible to install it badly? Of course, yes. I've been on inspections where I've said, hey, you know what, we should really fix this. So you want to make sure that something like ResNet Grade 1 is determined to be the quality of the installation. ResNet runs the HERS rating uh, column in the high performance building arena. And like, I don't agree with them about everything, but they did have this the fortitude to like say, hey, here's what's right. 
when you're installing insulation and then anything else is wrong. Uh, now, when we get down to the engines, we're talking about things like the heat exchange. So for example, an air conditioner. The air conditioner will be determined to be meeting the right pressure limits that are set forth on the label, which is called static pressure testing. And I'm linking this video on screen right now. So that would be one thing that you could do with the air conditioner, for example. The actual coil has resistance that it, you wanna make sure is not too much and that it's supposed to have air moving through it. Uh, the fans around the house, bathroom exhaust fans, for example, you wanna make sure those are tested to be within, let's just pick a real loosey-goosey number, say 10% of what it says on the label. A bath fan that's rated for 50 CFM, therefore should be moving between 45 and 55 CFM. It won't be moving more than that, trust me. But you wanna make sure it's not less than 45. Distribution, the ducts that move that air, you wanna make sure that they are airtight, and that's specifying a duct tightness test, for example, to make sure that the leakage of this duct system, even if it's all inside the enclosure, because ducts are plumbing for air, doesn't leak out more than the code best case, which is four CFM per 100 square feet. And also we wanna make sure that they are all insulated to some certain number. And luckily for you, it's really into, uh, easy to inspect this because the duct insulation value is printed on the outside of the duct insulation. So you can just look at it. And that should be the case of all insulation. In fact, it should, it's code that you have the thing that says what our value it is facing out so that you can actually inspect that. The distribution for water, and this is important for things like water purity, which we're gonna get into in a minute, but the water pipes, should also be tested for tightness. And in this case, it's not air tightness, it's water tightness. This is actually part of code, the pressure test that they do on the plumbing system. And in fact, if you have something like we have down in our crawl space, a, a uh, water leak detecting system that's just hooked up to our Wi-Fi, it texts me if there's a problem, that's gonna be really handy. And insulation, you wanna make sure that the water pipes are insulated where they need to be. Typically, you're worried about condensation in the case of cold water pipes or we're worried about heat loss in the case of hot water pipes. The controls, in the case of HVAC, you wanna make sure that the thermostat is not in sunlight. It's not sitting on an exterior wall. Uh, it's gonna be in some central place where you're sure that you're gonna be picking up a good sampling from the house. And that's gonna be the topic for another video, by the way, how we monitor homes and how many monitors you really need. Controls for water would be making sure that uh, when you turn on the hot water, that you get hot water within some certain amount of time. And by the way, let me just say, I, I was trained as a musician. I'm not an engineer. And I have been in the past, what's called the commissioning authority for giant buildings, for 70 unit multifamily buildings, where there are lots and lots of guys who have master's degrees involved in engineering this building and on site installing things. And my job was just write up, like what are the targets that we're aiming for? And then walk around and look at stuff and test stuff. And the disparity of what people think that they're able to do and what they're actually able to do if they don't do testing on a regular basis is crazy. Uh, so just because somebody says that they can hit a target and you put it into the contract doesn't mean you're gonna hit it the first time out. You might spend a, quite a bit of time tweaking that system to make sure that you're actually gonna get that. In the case of water controls, I had this one building that I'm thinking of. We said, how, how fast can you deliver water that's 120 degrees? And they said, oh, I said, a minute? Does that sound good? And they were like, oh yeah, totally. 30 seconds probably. First of all, 120 degrees is not anything you'd wanna have come out of a, a spigot. 105 degrees is very hot. That's about as hot as you'd want touching your skin. So we're not gonna be delivering 120 degree water. That was the first mistake that I made and also that they did not correct me on, which tells me they didn't know it either. Second thing is that when we tested it, it came in at five minutes at the furthest spigot in the, in the building. Five minutes to get hot water. That's gonna be 105 degrees. And then they fixed it and I came back and tested it and it took 14 minutes this time. And then they spent all day on-site testing the thing and they finally got it tuned in. So that, that kind of happens. So just be prepared for that. If you're gonna start demanding like certain targets be hit, just like plumb, I want my walls to all be straight up and down and I want my corners to be square. If you're really gonna check that stuff, just be, be ready to actually like follow through on making people correct it. 
uh, because you're going to be in the middle of a construction project and it's like, well, we could slow down and I could, the, the thing that often happens in the case of a really big builder who really doesn't want to do what you're asking is they'll say, I know it's in the contract and I want to fix it for you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to send our guys over as soon as we are available and they might go away from your house for a month just waiting for you to sweat it out and say, you know what? I don't care. You're right. Come back and keep on building my house. So uh, be ready for that. Now, as far as the elements go, the heat bleed you're thinking about through the skin of the house and also through all of the engines, wherever there is a what is called a delta T. That's the nerdy way of talking about it. Wherever there's a temperature differential, and that even goes for something like a refrigerator, for example, is something that moves heat from one place to another. You want to make sure that in the case of a refrigerator, it's not insulated at all. And that means being easy to clean. If the refrigerator is built in and it's screwed in place and you're never going to get it off the wall to like dust the coil on the back of it, that might be an issue. Airflow and pressure, as far as the home goes, you're talking about CFM and Pascals. Measuring things like from room to room. Is the pressure imbalance between rooms big enough that we're going to have a comfort problem and it's going to actually slow down the airflow. These are two sides of the same coin. And when you have one of them gets out of whack, it's going to have effects on the other. Moisture, you're talking about during construction, testing the moisture of materials as they go into the house. You want to make sure that wood, for example, is like less than 18% moisture. It should be a lot less than that, but often it'll sit out in the rain when it's at the lumber yard and then it gets delivered to your site. And it's also sitting out in the rain. Somebody might have a good idea of putting a piece of plywood over the top, which is fine, or a piece of plastic over the top, which might grow mold if it already got there wet. So you got you to gotta make sure to, to be on this stuff and be there. Honestly, every day is what you're looking at. If you're really going to have this stuff built into a contract and then be there to make sure that it's actually happening, every day is how often you're there. Or you, one of your um, you know, assigned deputies like a, th a third party inspector, like I sometimes serve for people. Also moisture in the air. You want to make sure that if this home is equipped with something like a humidifier or a dehumidifier that in the season following, you know, that within the one year that we've got the moisture in the home dialed in and it's actually performing the way it's supposed to. And all this stuff should be calculated, which is the topic of an upcoming video. So please do make sure you're subscribed for that. And contaminants last, let's talk about water first. We have a, a very cool video about some of the new technology. It's going to make it really easy for people to get pure water pretty inexpensively. Things like water softeners or charcoal filters. And there's different kinds of charcoal and there's different kinds of water softeners and there's different kinds of control systems for that. And all of that needs to be tested to make sure that after it's installed, you end up with the right contaminant levels, the right chlorine levels, the right uh, hardness levels that you're looking for. When we're talking about air, we're talking about things like CO2, which I've talked about before. That will test whether your ventilation is properly sized for your family. And then also things like TVOC, which is total volatile organic compounds, particles, radon, all of that can be monitored by pretty inexpensive uh, equipment out there. And I have other videos that if I haven't run out of space to link things within this video, I'm linking them on screen now. Um, but all of this stuff is totally doable. You just need to be able to have enough background in this. And that is what this channel is all about. So please do make sure again that you're subscribed. Like uh, the video if you can, that always helps. Comment below if you have questions about this. But you know, once we all have a firm grasp of what the language is and what the targets are that we're aiming for, and then we have enough people who can perform the testing to actually make sure that we hit the targets, then we can actually have this construction industry moving in a direction for everyone affordably that we all want to be moving in. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in next time.